Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by Nate Weitzer. He's on the East Coast, and we are looking at four games in the NBA tonight. little weird slate with some back-to-backs, but we've got some value for you here in this Best Bets episode. Also have play-up props up in a separate one, so make sure to like the video, subscribe to the page. Go ahead and continue to follow along the rest of this season with us. Nate, looking pretty good, I will say. Had a little sweep last night. I know you did pretty well as well uh, with a lot of games to choose from, but let's go ahead and get into one of your best bets here from the four games that we got tonight. Yeah, and I, I like this look off top. I mean, Pelicans, Warriors over 217 and a half. I think we're getting a lot of value due to the injuries. We know Steph will be out. Uh, we know DeJounte Murray and Trey Murphy will be out for the Pelicans. The Pelicans offense that's looked very stuck in the mud thus far. I mean, has only gotten Zion back for a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and he clearly hasn't, you know, kind of, you know, taken taken off yet. Um, had had the, the reins loosened. I think he does get up for these matchups against Draymond. He, in fact, does average 25 a game in four career when Draymond is actually souped up, suited up against him. And, I mean, the the thing with these guys like Trey and DeJounte is they're going to help the Pelicans' defense. A Pelicans' defense that lost Najee Marshall, Dyson Daniels, even Jonas Valanciunas is a better uh, interior defender than Tice, who's now playing heavy minutes. So, I mean... They're they're not the same kind of team that can hold Golden State into the in in that kind of slugfest. And I mean, when these teams have gotten together, it has not been a low scoring slugfest recently. It's been one team usually beating the brakes off the other. Um, so, but either way, it's it's gone over this total in four straight. Uh, the Pelicans have shown some ability to play with pace. I mean, they opened with 107 pace in their first game against the Bulls. It dropped to 95 last time out against Portland. Uh, But they gave up 125 because, like I'm saying, Zion back in there, not a lot of great defenders around him, not great defense. And I I don't think we should read too much into their back-to-back spot with Portland, which nobody is really taking seriously. Warriors have a game in there against Portland as well and against Utah, maybe the worst defense in the league. So I don't know what you're reading into those in terms of raw numbers. But, I mean, what, what you saw with the eye test is the Warriors playing with a lot of pace, a lot of guys in the rotation. So Steph like topped out at 27 minutes. It's not like it was the Steph, just like Steph centric offense. And like, without him, we're, we're screwed. Like I saw somebody quote what, what, what their on off numbers are without Steph. And it's, it's just like, maybe the gravity of him being out there gets other guys open. I mean, for sure that's happening, but like individually, he was 11 for 30 in the first two before he got injured. Um, He was not necessarily, you know, lighting it up. So I, I think their offense will be fine. I think the system has kind of adjusted that, uh, in terms of them just getting threes up, right? 49 three-point attempts per game, pretty much. They they were held to 43 by the Clippers, uh, you know, one of the few teams I would say can kind of put the clamps on that and keep it low scoring. And it's, it's still got about this total at 216. And then the opponents shooting 25% against the Warriors from three, that's, that's not sustainable, right? I mean, that's who they've played just really bad offenses. Um, Nola, I mean, Jordan Hawkins is 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 going to knock down shots. He's 71% true shooting right now. The other guys should come along, and I think they'll be able to score a, as they have recently against Golden State. Yeah, I, I think it makes total sense. I, I'm, I'm kind of not low on Golden State, but I, I think the key points that you're making here are just like who have they played. I, I like what they're doing. I, I like the – like exacerbated strength in numbers that they had from years ago where they had a normal eight, nine man rotation and played them consistently. But like now we're talking about a team that's like, it's one of these things, man, where I'm just watching it. I'm going, it's like almost the opponent is thrown off by the fact that every three minutes there's a new defender. There's somebody new for them to guard that throws them off. And all these dudes are fresh and playing as hard as possible. So I like all of that. Um, but this is a really good spot for for Nola, to your point, and for, for Zion to maybe continue to have his minutes heightened. We heard Willie Green talk about his minutes restriction. Haven't heard anything about it for this game. And he has said every game before they, they played this season, Zion's on a minute restriction. So we'll see what he says in his pregame or today. Uh, but that's kind of what I would bank on is Zion getting back up above 30 minutes uh, in a game that, that should be kind of close for a bit. But if if the uh, if Zion and, and company are dominating down low, then I think this one is, is a wrap. So um, I'm going to go to the other game here and just take Minnesota to minus five i there's not nothing to use this season uh other than minnesota's looked good since they lost and dallas luca another slow start to the season um this is why the man struggles to win mvp awards is because scoring 35 a game for 
all but two months of the season still doesn't necessarily get you uh, the, the the MVP. And it also hurts your seed as a team, which is what, where they're at. And I, I think Minnesota is, is definitely a lot more locked in right now. Uh, you look at them with a rest advantage last year, 15-8-1 uh, and one when they had that. Um, and I think Julius Randle is going to be a problem. And I think that's where I'm, I'm going to be looking as well um, for a player prop. I was considering looking at Luka, but I, I do not like where Luka is at. And I cannot see him taking this game that seriously, to be honest. I haven't seen him take any of these games that seriously so far. And I don't know that there's any kind of motivating factor for him after they beat him. This is, just seems like a, a bad spot for Luka. I'm not going to fade him, but uh, I, I definitely think Julius Randle is going to be the one who's a problem. You looked at Dallas last year, and the only thing I don't think that they fixed is the ability to guard a four and especially a stretch four. And that makes sense when they like, you know, they traded four different like three, four combo forwards, guys like DFS, even Grant Williams at times who say what you want about him, but he's a pes pesky defender. Um, they don't have those players anymore. Now they've, they're just relying on two really big, awesome guys. And Derek Lively, when he's in there, staggering minutes with uh, uh, against um, Gafford, excuse me, they're just going to be too busy with Rudy. Uh, we know that they're going to need Rudy in there. And regardless of how well Luca has played before against Rudy's drop defense, He's not he's shooting 30 percent right now. So I don't think he's going to shoot Rudy off the floor the way he did at times in the playoffs. That only makes things a little bit easier for Julius Randle, who gets to work from the outside. Uh, and, and then, Rudy, you have on the opposite, uh, you know, opposite block so that there's still room for Julius to get to the bucket. So I'm, I'm really looking for th at that as to be a really like crucial matchup in this game. That's going to really give the edge to Minnesota. Um, and I think we'll see a little bit more Jaden McDaniels tonight, too. He's only been playing about 25 minutes, but he'll be the guy on Luka predominantly. And, and that should be working out well enough for them to win this thing by five and for the Mavs to probably be giving up by the middle of the fourth quarter. That's how I see this one going. So PJ Washington slander out here just then yes. didn't even get a name mention as the yep. guy who, who is out there playing power forward. Um, just an empty body apparently, but no, I mean, yeah, <laughs> if it's not Randall, it, it's Nas Reed. Um, I, I, right. I was looking at props between those guys, like trying to predict who's going to be more effective and Nas having the lower props. I was leaning towards that. Uh, cause, cause the success he did have against, against Washington and Dallas in the playoffs. But yeah, I mean, they, they, the depth, the rest advantage, the revenge factor, like all the, the trends you kind of look for in the NBA point you to the minute. So the Timberwolves in the spot. Um, so it, it is, it is definitely a spot to bet, um, and to fade the Mavs after they played last night, but I'm going to buck trends with my next pick nuggets minus four and a half. And they are coming off an overtime win in Toronto short travel down to Brooklyn, uh, which has been waiting for them. But I mean, Brooklyn's not good. So that's, that's a win. <laughs> that's a win in this column too. And I mean, th sometimes these, these overtime comeback wins, you know, instead of exhausting a team, maybe a team that needed a spark like the Nuggets that, that just came into the season looking like, oh my God, they are just like, they have nothing here. They have no depth. They have no, they have nothing around Jokic and Jamal Murray is washed. And then, well, Jamal Murray has a very nice move to force overtime and, and helps them win the game. So I think he can ride that into the next night. I mean, they were nine and four on back-to-backs last year. Smart veteran team played slower, got more free throw attempts. They happen to be playing a Nets team that is what? Allowing the, the second most free throw attempts thus far, the highest free throw rate in the league. Uh, they have Nick, Nick Clapston dealing with dealing with a hamstring injury he got back in there in that in their last game. Maybe they just caught the Bucks looking ahead to the Celtics, though. Like the fact that the Nets were able to get a win there. Like I'm not I'm not scared of them because of that. Um, Claxton got his bag. I don't know how motivated he is at this moment, seeing as he might eventually get traded off this bottom feeding roster. And it's really just like, is Cam Thomas going to hit shots? Right. Because he's going to take about 30 and he hasn't had any success against Denver. Um, I mean, maybe you can even put Aaron Gordon on him. I think he, he can, he can probably hang. He's not too quick for Gordon. I mean, but the last three against Denver, 14 points, 37% from the field. And that was two with him as the guy Nets lost both those games. It was in the same situation last year. Actually, they, they did have an off day, but they went Toronto down to Brooklyn, got the win. Um, and that was with Brooklyn showing a little bit more signs of, of talent I guess the, the the rare Dennis Schroeder spike is what worries me here, but he also has awful numbers against the Nuggets. Um, so I, I mean, to take that with with what you will. This this Brooklyn team, though, I mean, yeah, just like fourth worst rebounding team, fourth worst paint points, seventh highest turnover rate thus far in the in the game in in the league, and giving up thirty two points per game in the second half. So 
if Denver has enough energy, I, I do think they will pull this one out um, and, and before I think they head to Minnesota for an even bigger game. Man, yeah. I mean, it takes some balls because it, it took Jokic superhuman last night uh, to obviously to win that game against the Toronto Raptors. And Jakob Pertl really showed up for that one. Everybody did. We got to overtime. I was looking at the box where everybody got over. But I, I, I guess this, this should happen. Um, I, I The vibes are mad low, obviously. The thing that I think the, the thing that blows this bet up is if Cam Thomas does superhuman stuff in a situation where this defense is not really tailor made to stop a guy like him um I, I i suppose you start with um with with jamal on him but I, I think he'll be a bit of a problem unless they sort of focus on him and and allow the others to kind of remain a bit more open but no, no nothing telling me that denver shouldn't win this game other than being a bit tired so we'll see i mean still really good on back-to-backs last year like you said but um look it's four games it's kind of a, a nasty nasty boy slate so I, I think this is as good of a bet as any of them but uh let me close it out with an sgp uh, don't really feel like trying to figure out too much of that, that that Utah sack game. Probably a lot of points. I'd definitely be leaning to the over. That's how those teams play, but more so they play that way in Utah. So it was a stay away. But like I was mentioning, I like Julius Randle in this one. I like the boards. Um, that was something that I was really like, I'm going to keep an eye on the rebounds because I do think Rudy's going to have an incredible rebounding season. And that has already been the case so far, obviously. But Julius is is a different player than Cat and the way that he gets rebounds and the space that he requires to, to be successful. I just think that's going to lead to more boards. So I, I parlayed him with eight plus boards and Minnesota to win this thing on the money line. Plus 114 on DraftKings was a, a better number than, than the other couple of books I looked at. Um, but for, for Randall, like the rebound chances are super high right now. The minutes remain. I think the first game we were just kind of he was really just trying to figure it out. And there was clearly a conversation uh, between him and the coaching staff between that game and the last two saying, here's what we need from you, man. We need you to shoot the ball 15 to 16 times and we need you to rebound the ball at like a 40, like a 45, 55% clip of the rebound chances that you have. So we need you to grab those. And he's gone in and done that since then, pulling down nine boards both times. Um, the rebound chances on the season now in three games, 15 per game as well. So you, the usage is there for him. The minutes are there for him. Dallas has been a bad rebounding team to date, 25th in the NBA in terms of the amount of opponents or rebounds that they're allowing. And, and they're definitely not doing work on the defensive glass like they should be, giving up too many offensive rebounds, bottom five in that category as well. Um, and the power four, it's like, like I was saying, like, yeah, P.J. Washington slander, fine. But I don't think P.J. Washington is a defender for uh, Julius Randle. He was all right in the playoffs last season at best is what I would give him. Um, but I still think there was two, there was a number of corner threes that Randall's hit uh, a good amount of threes this season below the break as opposed to above it where he's playing and, and getting that pass uh, from guys like Ant who are driving and even Mike Conley off of that action. So yeah, he's going to continue to be open on the opposite wing when they're running the pick and roll with Rudy on the other side. And he's going to continue to just have space to work on the uh, in terms of the rebounds when Rudy's boxing out three dudes at once. So I'm going to continue to believe in Randall boards this year. Yeah, I, I got no problem with it. Um, I will mention, I also like the other SGP, which you just pulled out of here, which was yeah. Luca to get his, right? Like 30 points, two or three threes for Luca, but the Wolves to win the game, uh, yeah. which the Mavs, that was kind of the, the reverse blueprint that cost them against the Suns, right? As the Suns were like, well, go ahead, Luca, like get it, get all your points and we'll just shut right. down these, these role players. We're not going to leave any shooters. I think the wolves could do the exact same thing here. Right. Where they, they even more effect, right. It was yeah. like, yeah, Luca's going to get his, uh, but we can absolutely clamp down on those guys and win this game. Yeah, I, I can see that. I got scared of just how bad he's playing. I, the motivation factor. I, I liked him in that game against the Suns because he hates Devin Booker. I think there's truth to that. Whether or not it's like funny or not anymore, they those dudes get up to play against each other. So I, I like that spot for him. But it's the same concept. Like you've got a drop sent a drop deep. Uh, in terms of Phoenix and uh, Minnesota, Minnesota even more pronounced of a drop defense, which is why I do like you can get two threes, 25 plus points. It does kind of seem like he saved himself for this game from last night. 15 points, didn't shoot the ball well, but got others involved and still made sure they won that game. So I, I have no problem with the Luca play either. Um, I ended up going with Randall because I was just very impressed by his rebound chances, but I think both are probably a pretty good look with the Wolves to still win. So you can get some negative correlation with that Luca bet, like you mentioned. But that's all the time we have for you in the Best Bets episode. Also got those play props up so make sure to subscribe to that page and continue to follow along all season and until we see you next happy betting